You know it's tough when kids call you names. It's always worse when they just use your name. I knew she was about to get to my name because she had that, like, ethnic pause. My life now is just a never-ending guessing game of where are you really from? Open your eyes! Well, I don't know how my mom did it, you know what I mean? My mom's amazing, you know what I mean? She had two kids that, that were living at home at the time when she was, you know, when she was single, you know, and she raised both of us uh, really well. She was amazing. She became the mother and the father. And the reason why I tell you that is because she reminded us every fucking day. <laughs> there wasn't a day that my mom didn't tell us that. Just me and my sister just playing in the room, uh, playing around, and then my mom would just come into the room and go, I just want you kids to know one thing. I'm the mother and the father. I bring home the bacon and I cook that motherfucker too. <laughs> My mom was tough as shit. I dare anybody to fuck with my mom's kids. Dare anybody. My mom was 4'10". She'll fight anybody. She didn't give a shit. That's how tough my mom was. And I remember one time I was at a shoe store and I was fucking up the shoe wall. You know the shoe display wall? Fucking it up. Just putting shoes all over the place, right? And the salesman saw me. He was like, hey, get the fuck out of here. Fucking up the shoe wall. Get the fuck out of here. He's cursing at me, right? He didn't know my mom was in the back of the store. He couldn't see her. She's 4'10". My mom popped around the corner. She was like, hey, who are you talking to? You don't talk to my children like that. Who are you, huh? I want to speak to the manager. <laughs> and the guy started making fun of my mom's accent. Oh, you want to speak, speak to the manager? Huh? You want to talk, talk to the manager? And my mom goes, oh, that's funny. You're making fun of my accent? I live in your country and I speak two languages, Tagalog and English. You live here. How many do you speak? One? You're stupid. <laughs> So the guy started cursing at my mom, right? He's like, you know what? I don't need to hear this shit. Get the fuck out of my store. Take your kid and get the fuck out of my store, right? So my mom started cursing back, right? And I've, I've seen my mom curse before, but we never seen her get into a curse fight. And when you curse, certain words go together. But my mom takes whatever curse word she knows and throws them at you. He's like, get the fuck out of my store. My mom goes, oh yeah? You son of a shit. Fuck your pussy has a dick with a shit in it, and your pussy has a mother, mother shit, you. Fuck your pussy, you. I looked at my sister and go, did mom just say mother shit? <laughs> if I lost something, I lost it. My mom would never help us find shit, right? Normal parents, normal, normal parents help their fucking kids, right? Normal parents help. It's like, okay, what did, you, did you lose something? Your keys? What, what, was it in your pants? Well, what jeans? Were you wearing jeans? Well, let's look for those jeans. That, that's how you fucking help your kids find shit, not my mom. If I lost something, I can guarantee my mom's right behind me fucking with me. Right, she enjoys that shit. If I'm looking under the couch, I guarantee my mom's right behind me like, oh, what, what, what? <laughs> what, what's under, what's under the couch, Joseph? <laughs> uh, is it your kids? Did you lose your kids again? <laughs> oh, maybe they walk under the couch like that? <laughs> now I gotta ask my mom for help. That's the worst mistake I can make. Mom, I'm late for work. Do you know where my keys are, Joseph? Did you just ask me where your kids are? Isn't that a stupid question? That is a stupid question, Joseph. Excuse me, person that does not drive my car. Do you know where my kids are? <laughs> that is stupid, Joseph. Why don't you ask me where my kids are? I'll know the answer to that. Go ahead, Joseph, ask me. Come on, ask me right now. Mom, do you know where your keys are? Of course I do! <laughs> of course I do, Joseph! I know where my keys are all the time. You know why, Joseph? Because I put them in the same place that I always put my keys. I hang them over here, oh, on this wooden plaque that says keys. <laughs> Joseph, when you lose something, do you use your eyes to look for it? Or do you use your mouth? Because every time you lose something, Joseph, you use your mouth to find something. You can't find anything like that, Joseph. You just walk around, has anybody seen my kids? I don't know where my kids are. I made my way open your eyes. Look.
Uh, but my full name is actually Han Tien, which is spelled H-A-N-H-T-I-E-N. Remember that. Uh, I once had a teacher in high school, a white teacher. <laughs> uh, who was reading through roll call, and I knew she was about to get to my name because she had that, like, ethnic pause. And before I could say anything, she looked at those letters, H-A-N-H-T-I-E-N, -H -E and said out loud, is there a Hank Tina in the room? <laughs> Hank Tina? Is there a Hank Tina here? That means this grown-ass adult who's been given the power to mold young minds, looked at those letters, H-A-N-H-T-I-N, -H and thought to herself, <laughs> this is unfamiliar to me. <laughs> you know what? I'm just gonna combine the nicknames of my favorite two American names, Henry and Christina, Hank Tina. Hank Tina? Hank Tina's not a name anywhere. <laughs> That's not a name that exists anywhere in the world. Unless you're like the child of progressive parents from small town Missouri, and they're like, get on out there, Hank Tina. Come on, scoot. Find the gender expression that fits you. Scoot, Hank Tina, scoot. You love it when I say scoot, scoot, Hank Tina. Surprise. <laughs> Shane Wang is Chinese. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for being here. My name is Shane Wang. Sometimes uh, when I tell people that, they're like, wow, that is perfect for pursuing stand-up comedy. I'm like, yeah, but first, I was trying to pursue childhood. <laughs> you know, it's tough when kids call you names. It's always worse when they just use your name. <laughs> Even recently, I was making a reservation for this hotel in Arkansas. I gave the guy information, it was all good. I told him my name, I said, Shane Wayne. He said, that's funny. You don't sound like that. I was like, my bad. I'm sorry if I don't meet your racist expectations. I'm sorry if I don't sound like a complete stereotype, Arkansas. You, on the other hand, doing a really good job. So, uh... I was hanging out with my younger brother recently, and we got into a conversation about how great an older brother I am. I brought up the topic. Um, <laughs> and he was being sarcastic because he had remembered a game that I had invented when I was six and he was four called the belt game. Um, <laughs> you see, uh, I found my dad's belt and I invented a game where the rules were you had to hit each other with the belt. <laughs> and uh, that's as far as I'd gotten at that point. Now, I'm the older brother, right? So I got to go first. <laughs> so I took the belt and I whipped him in the eye. <laughs> and he started screaming and crying like a four-year-old. And, and then my mom walked in and to my surprise, she also knew how to play the belt game. <laughs> I was like, Mom, how do you know how to play the belt game? I just made it up. I mean, <laughs> apparently she was an old pro. A, uh, because she would take the belt and she would hit me across the back with it. And she said, now, now you know how your brother feels. And I looked back at her and I said, no, I don't. I hit him in the eye. <laughs> that was the end of belt game and a much-needed return to Nerf. 
Uh, I grew up in a predominantly white suburb, and when you're one of the few Asian American kids, people say some pretty weird stuff to you. And by weird, I mean like entertainingly racist. Not like, oh my God, that was so bad, but oh my God, that was so creative. How did you come up with that? <laughs> so I was in high school shopping for tankinis at the local TJ Maxx. <laughs> Yes, ladies, tankinis, because I wanted to be modest but flirty, you know? <laughs> Show an inch of my skin so people are like, what's the rest of her stomach look like? <laughs> and so I was shopping for tankinis and I felt a tap on my shoulder and I turned around and this white woman goes, are you Michelle Kwan? <laughs> and I love picturing this woman seeing me across the way, thumbing through tankinis and she's like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Is that, is that two-time Olympian, five-time world figure skating champion, Michelle Kwan? In my favorite TJ Maxx, oh my God. No one else in the store knows. No one else in the store knows. Okay, I'm gonna go talk to her, I'm gonna go talk to her. I didn't say anything right away because that's never happened to me before. And so in my hesitation, she goes, are you Michelle Kwan? I don't want to speak for Michelle. But I feel like I'd know my own name if it was Michelle. You wouldn't have to slow it down for me. When I look back on that moment though, I, I really can't, I can't blame her because I was shopping for tankinis like this. <laughs> it's for all the quinatics out there, that's what we call ourselves. It was weird growing up in the Midwest uh, with my situation because like, I find that my life now is just a never ending guessing game of where are you really from, you know? Um, it's just exhausting to get it all the time. Like I was at a party recently and a guy I did not even know approached me from across the party and without even knowing my name, the first words out of his lips were, um, I'm sorry, but what, um, what kind are you? Like I'm some sort of unmarked dessert on a buffet bar, you know? Like it was just that casual. And it's so frustrating, it's like fine, I don't mind having the conversation I don't mind answering the questions. It just never turns into an interesting conversation, you know? Like every single day, it's just like, oh, I'm from South Korea. And they're like, oh, cool. I taught English in South Korea for a year. And I'm like, awesome. I knew some D students in high school who needed to escape too, you know? Like, <laughs> we all know. Them. Okay, good. Some of you knew some people who needed to flee. Um, that's good. It's just frustrating. I don't know. It was never worse. I worked at the Olive Garden for two years. Um, hold for applause. Okay. Um, <laughs> Wow, some of you think you're too good to uh, clap for the Olive Garden. Well, have I got something to tell you? You're not! <laughs> um, no, I love the Olive Garden. I worked there for a while, and I remember this one time I approached this table. It was like three elderly white guys, and you know, we you know, exchanged uh, pleasantries, and then at one point, one of the guys at the table was like, say, son, are you Korean? And I was like, oh my God, that's an amazing guess. And how did you know that? And he was like, well, I fought in the Korean War, so I know a thing or two about this. And I was like, what does this mean for our relationship now? <laughs> Do you need a new server? Uh, are you going to have a flashback or something? Like, what's going on? Like, it's almost worse when people guess correctly. Like, I met this guy on a dating app and we exchanged numbers and we were texting back and forth. And out of the blue at one point, he was like, so you're Korean, right? And I was like, yeah, that's amazing. Like, how did you guess that? And he was like, your eye shape. And I was like, ugh, like, are you gonna measure my skull next? Like, what? <laughs> Where are we going with this? And the weirder thing is, is that I didn't send him any pictures of my face. I'd only sent him pictures of my butthole. So I don't know what eye shape <laughs> he was talking about. Very confusing, very confusing. I deal with a lot of questions about my race, but one question I get a lot um, and it's sort of like a jokey question. Um, I, you, get, you probably get it too. Do you get like a jokey question that bugs you? Okay, so on the count of three, we're going to say the question that we get at the same time. And hopefully it's the same question because this is on TV, okay? <laughs> this is a, a big life moment for me. <laughs> so if you mess this up, just think about, have that weight on your shoulders um, as I count down from three, okay? 
One, two, three. Do you eat dog? Okay, you didn't say anything. Um, that's outrageous. Um, no, that's the question. People think they're so clever, like they're the first person to ever like ask me this question. Do you eat dog? And it used to piss me off and like upset me because I get it, like I know why you're asking the question. But at this point in my life, I'm like, yeah, I would fucking eat a dog, why not? I eat all the other meats. Uh, doesn't seem like an issue. Okay, I'm losing you. Um, I can sense that. But, 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 but bear, bear with me, there's a point to this. Do I have any dog owners in the audience tonight? Make some noise if you're a dog owner. Okay, you guys have dogs. Here's the thing, I would eat your dog, sight unseen, I would. Um, you don't even have to show me a picture, I just know that I would eat it. Uh, if it were presented to me, if it were cooked nicely, you know? Um, but the thing is, is that's the, the line for me. Like, there's all these ads in New York right now that PETA has that has like a spectrum of animals and it's got like a pig on one side and a dog on the other. And it's like, why would you eat this pig? But you won't eat that dog. And it's like, because I've never met that pig, okay? <laughs> if I knew its first name, that might change things. That's the message of Charlotte's Web. It really is, is you can eat any old pig you want as long as it doesn't have an inner life, you know? And that's... <laughs> where things get really dicey. Like, what they need to do is do what they do with cigarette packs uh, in Europe. You know, they put, like, blackened lungs on the outside of the packs. If they would just put facts about the cows on the burger patties, I'd never eat another goddamn burger. You know, if it was just like, this is Daisy, her favorite color is blue. And I'd be like, I can't eat Daisy, she likes Magnolia. I love that movie. <laughs> we have too much in common, I can't do it. <laughs>